I think we're here. I think we're live. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> if this is live, let me know. Make sure this microphone is working. Because I'm trying a bit of a setup at the moment. <laughs> so hopefully we will see some people come through. Yes, I can see there's a five on my screen. Um, I have got a fan on in the background. So if it's a little bit loud, let me know so I can so I can sort that out ASAP, Rocky. Um, I'll wait for a few people to come in. Again, just, just say hi. Just let me know. Um, <laughs> Hey, we got people. Hello, is is the fan too loud? Uh, please let me know about the fan, because I I have a panic. I will just die of sweat. But we've been <laughs> we've been used to that for a while. We've been used to that for a while at the moment. Uh, we got Larry fan. I need to know about the fan. Can we hear the fan? I hope we can't hear the fan. Uh, hi, Sam. If you want to match with these video, head over to her channel. She just did a lovely live stream about partition for India's Independence Day. I would highly recommend it. Go check that out. Yes. Now we're talking. This is what we're here about. End of next week. End of next week, a 10 out of 10 will be out. I will say... Saturday, it will be out. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to do everything I need to do. I think I want to change a few things. I'm not sure. Saturday, next Saturday, six days time, that'll be it. 10 out of 10. Yes. Now we're talking. But we, this man. Yeah. So my phone's here. I'm using this as the camera, plugging it through the laptop. But I'm really just used to stare at the, the laptop. So I hope this isn't just like, a little bit chaotic, but it always is, isn't it? Who else have we got? We got Polina. Cactula. Hope you're doing well. Over in Russia. Always. Always. Go check it out. Oh, also, uh, for it is Independence Day, a video meta narrator. It's just a wonderful video as well. Uh, mostly nonfiction. But if that's your thing. Go and learn about it, because um, this is great. Nice setup. Lazy setup. But I'll take it. So, um, <laughs> but before we kick off, um, just to explain, as you will see, just just by there, just by, look at me, look at me adding all this. Apparently, I, could, I, I figured this out all of two minutes ago, but I'm going to say that I planned it. Uh, any money made from this stream and any super chats just to be like completely upfront uh, that's going to go towards me getting away from iMovie for Final Cut Pro so yeah any anything made from here on out be that through my coffee link be that through my PayPal be that through super chats or just the, the money made from this will all be going through me updating my software because I like editing videos. I don't know if anyone can tell that, uh, but I feel as though Final Cut Pro might be like the the, the next thing I need. Um, so, uh, and the fact I'm a PhD student, um, I get that on a slight discount. Bah, bah, bah. That's what it's all about. So we got Kay. It's it's my boy from Ireland. Love it. Who's the non-fiction about Sister Melita? Uh, no, uh, uh, Sheila from uh, Meta Narrator. I'll I'll send you a link to a video on Instagram afterwards. We got Paula, possibly the coolest person I know at the moment. I'm having a chat with her on Wednesday, and I'm like really excited. But she's really cool. No, we're getting about. We are. <laughs> There we go. You can all have party poppers. <laughs> I got like I still got like thirty to like get through. <laughs> but thank you ever so much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Molly. Hello. What? Oh, we spoke on Discord. Hello. How are we doing? I believe it's the same Molly. 
who knows? Um, also, down below as well, if you want to ask a question to me, to for me to answer in this similar format, like a live stream, uh, where everyone can kind of like chip in, um, my link, my email will be in the description of this video, but also in the little, apparently we call it a ticker in the business. I know that because it says ticker on the side, but... <laughs> Hello from Norway. I hope we're doing very well. Right, let's get into it. So yeah, so so again, fully upfront. Anybody made from this is going towards software. If you want to ask, if you want to ask a cue for me to a email, that is the email. But there, so any like frequently asked questions, which basically th this has been since I've started. Um, and I'm gonna frequently answer it. I'm not. I'm just gonna have this video. <laughs> I had a very interesting way to cast the issue. Let's probably apologize to book about book very troll XP. <laughs> Best book of 2022. Mate, this is too far. <laughs> yes, that's the attitude. Okay, so hopefully this works. Okay, so before we start, okay, so this is an email. I have taken it. Um, I just put it into pages just so we get like the essence and kind of talk through each point being made from this subscriber. So again, the subscriber has given me permission to use his name and the subscriber has given me permission to use this email. So he's completely agreed to it. And as you can see the asterisks, we follow them down the email thread where the permission is given is below, which is in the third email. So I'm not doing anything towards. Actually, you'll see, I tell him I don't want to do it, but he, he was completely fine. Uh, and a third, I've used redacted where information could lead to, uh, to, lead to him. Uh, or if there's any personal issues or anything, I think is not worth sharing with strangers online. I've just redacted it all. So hopefully this should go plain sailing. How this works, just <laughs> because this is all new to us. I say us, it's, this is just me. Uh, I can't see the comments at the moment. So what I'm probably going to do is flick back and forth. So if it kind of changes on the screen, just bear with. But any questions that you have in regards to reading critically, reading deeper, how to analyze books, because they're all just the same thing packaged differently. So we're all gonna, we're just going to treat them all the same. So before we crack on... Norwegian Krona! Thank you so much, Hypetri! Thank you oh so much. Maybe if everyone does a super chat, maybe I'll do something. I'll have a think about that. I'll come back to people. So if you've left a super chat, send me an Insta DM or message me on Discord. I'll see what I can do. I think I'll be pretty cool. Um so let's start. So this was on the third of May. And we're gonna see in this email. I pr <laughs> I promise. I'll do a reaction video to this pretty quickly. It's it's the 15th of August today, but hey ho. So he says, Kieran. And before I start this, I feel uh feel free to throw this email straight into the metaphorical bin. Uh again, if people want to contact me, just contact me. Um I I, I will speak to most I think most people I've met through online have been me just messaging them or just like engaging in a conversation. Um, I, I think some people feel when it comes to online, there's a there's a barrier, um, and that's like just not the case. Uh, uh, people are like always like happy to chat, um, but it depends like what you want to talk about. Uh, if it's just you saying, "Please review my book," here's a link. I'm probably not going to respond. This is going to be maybe not useful at all. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I'm giving you like wrong information. Uh, but I think it's right information. So, uh, I make a contact for a few reasons, some of which are vague. Most of those I've redacted. So, firstly, I wanted to apologize because I haven't been following the channel for the past six months. Doesn't really matter. Dip in and out. I, I know I, I, I read more obscure books, so I'm pretty okay if I don't see someone <laughs> pop up for ages. Um, I think I got put up to... Okay, now this is really important. So I think I got put off with the whole Discord thing started with the Booker Prize longlist last year. So that's 2020 when Burn Sugar should have won. Damn it. Um, so many critical opinions make me feel like I became a uh, competitive forum. Who was the most clever? Okay, so. Okay. Let's talk about this for a bit. And I, I, again, I'm, I'm going to look at the 
comment so, so please feel free to like chip in on this. Discord or places where people chat, such as uh, I didn't know it was a thing, but like 4chan, 4chan lit, or I think Discords are becoming more popular for that immediacy and it's how you could, you know, you can be international with it. The difficulty with it is that when you're dealing with text, like text alone, everything can come across really sharp or it can come across really blunt. So any like form of like sarcasm or tug in cheek or just people try trying, I would say more so, people trying to express themselves as they get into critically reading, to, to read it critically, that it can come across quite, like, really blunt. Um, and following from there, it, it can feel quite... Oh, my gosh. Larry, thank you very much, you absolute mad lad. Thank you so much. Uh, where was I? Train of thought, yes. So I think when some people start, it, it can feel very frustrated for someone to rebut, to question your opinion, or simply just, like, outright just go, you're wrong. And I know in the Discord, I just, I, I do, like, interact like that. I'll just send a, a gift be like, why is everyone wrong bar me? I think the difficulty is, uh, people might disagree, is that if you've been watching me for a while, you kind of understand who I am, my humor, and how I would engage with that. Um, when it comes to people who we don't know, when it comes to people who we aren't familiar with or in the way that they type or how they portray themselves online, it can feel very, um, like, overbearing. And there have been some people, which is really... I'm not going to name names, but there was one person on the Discord last year and I was reading their comments going, I feel as though this is like, like you're just coming at me. And then the person made a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, like now I've read this and I go, I've just been wrong my entire life. <laughs> and I'm like, my preconceptions and notions of just like text from this person and how they are completely different. And it's just, I just needed to know them better. However, there does come, and I think people know that I hate this, um, even though I am doing a PhD, I really hate intellectualism. I, I hate this, this, like, I've read this, therefore I, and I, I know people say it, that I really hate it, but like, big brain. I just hate that, because as soon as you, like, admit that you understand something, or that you're, like, the authority on it, or that you know better because, well, I've read Heidegger, or I've read Proust, and... And they just like to start listing novels at you. Like, trust me, they are the people who don't know what they're talking about. I've been in university with these people. I've had chats with these people uh, in an academic setting. And it's very easy to know that they don't know what they're talking about and are just hiding behind citation, reference, or just like classics. I think classics get a bad rep because you do just get people being like, well, I read all Proust. And you're like, okay, well, that means nothing to me because I have not read it. I can't really, can't really argue with that. Uh, and also, look, if people disagree with you, that's completely fine. You don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to like try to come around to that. Uh, I don't know what people think in the comments. Uh, hi, Sarah. <laughs> I think I know what we're referencing because I, I uh, Sarah's, I think she's. Still do the PhD. You might have finished it last year. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, as soon as people start like throwing things at you or becoming like completely defensive to the point where they're not allowing you, they're not allowing you space to express yourself. They don't know what they mean. <laughs> and that's why I like when people disagree with me. I'm like, yeah, cool. Like completely get where you're coming from. I don't have to like it though. And vice versa. Um, and this kind of comes on to the whole, if, if you're negative, I think this, come, this critical comes from negativity. And you always get the whole, I get it in my comments all the time, which is, you can't say that you don't like it. It's all subjective. Other people like it. But if you question them back on that, which I've started to do now <laughs> in my comments of, so if I gave this a positive review, would your comment still be, you can't say that. It's all subjective. I didn't like it. Most people never comment back. 
because it's just a stupid argument to make. But I think, I think engaging in these conversations are, um, I, I think the conversations are useful and to get into them, I think maybe start messaging people who you do know. And if that has to be myself, if you're like, hey, I, I've read this book, this is what I was thinking, and I've read it, um, then we can have that conversation. And I, I'm, I'm more than happy for people to like message me, voice note me about books that I've read, or they've seen me review something they were curious about or want to like pick my brains on it. You're more than welcome to do that. Again, comments, DMs. I don't particularly mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I do my PhD on Anglo romanticism and the legacy into postmodernism. I will never tell anyone I know everything about everything. I, I I hate the whole... So I do a lot of, of work on Byron and Percy Shelley. And people just think that I've... Because I've read a lot of Byron, I can, like, recite it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't recite Don Juan for you. Actually, uh, Don Juan is actually Don Juan to make the rhyme work. But nevertheless, but we can... And that's the thing. I think there's, there's pointed things out and just being, like, defensive... And just like like I'm just putting a barrier up, like you're wrong. I don't agree with your opinion. Just just walk past it. <laughs> That's what I would say. You don't read if you didn't read X. Like yeah, like read what you want. I don't particularly care. I I I I I would rather people read whatever they want. I'm more impressed with people who've read something I have zero concept about. That everyone be like, I've read all of Jane Austen. If someone went, I've read, um. Let's look at a book. Jean Jean Baptiste Delano. I've not read his book, Anna Amelia. If you've read all his works, I'm way more in, like way more interested in what you have to say than it was read all of Dostoevsky. And I fit into I've read all of Dostoevsky. But I don't understand most of Dostoevsky because the man was on another level. Is it sometimes uh, it is sometimes to do with so many literature students at PhD around, especially when literature is not in the mother tongue. We're going to touch on that. That comes back in this email later on. But a, a TLDR, I don't have time. I want to switch off. I have not used <laughs> my my BA, my MA, or my PhD while doing reviews. Everything that I have learned and studied is not relevant to... to I'll, I'll say 80% of the books. I'll say that. Salman Rushdie's a bit of a different case. But when I talk about Rushdie, I'm talking about it at like a I'm having a conversation in a pub sort of level or like my mate's interested like how would I like pitch it to him rather than, hey, like let's talk about um, Indian subcontinent um, magic realism uh, during partition and what that means for the postmodern. Like I'm not talking like that. And I don't think you can have... Trust me, my PhD is only interesting to me and people who are interested in it. There's a large swathe of people who couldn't care less. Who couldn't care less. And it's the reason why I probably won't do... I was thinking of doing it. Of like a, a romanticism series about the Anglo poets. But it's not interesting to like anyone who's not interested. I'm interested in it. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I would, maybe I would, but it's no. <laughs> yeah, literature is not in your own mother tongue, and that kind of to to, to, to kind of talk about this because I've had conversations not in, in this email. Gosh, we haven't even touched on this, but I think I'll keep Paula's um comment up. It's also really intimidating reviewing a translated work where I've clearly missed something because I'm not from the culture or I don't know enough about the culture to talk about it. Um, prime example, today I've dropped two reviews on Serhi Jadan on his work. I had an absolutely lovely conversation with Genkin Reads. Um, if you don't know who that is, go follow her. She's on Instagram does so much to promote uh, Ukrainian literature and was the person who got me on to Jadan in the first place. We had a lovely conversation 
because I didn't like a Voloshila grad, which is this book. I didn't throw it on the floor, trust me. Uh, Voloshila grad. Um, she goes, you wouldn't have picked up on X, Y, Z, but I understand because unless you're unless you're aware of it, you never would pick up on it. And that's a conversation way nicer than, well, you just haven't done your research. Because well, I, I, is you just can't. And I think when it comes to translated works, and I can only talk from, from this point of view because I only speak <laughs> I only speak English. So uh, please feel free to argue with me. I'm completely fine with that. And I'm happy to be challenged. But like I I have to kind of engage with it at that level, which is the lay person who I think watches my channel and who I engage with wouldn't be able to pick up on references. Like if I could, great, probably would change like the book for me. Um, but as a, would you pick this book up? You've read this just now, didn't know that information. I probably would say no. Look, this taste looks set. I thought you cancelled. It's coming soon. I can, <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to move on a little bit in here. Uh, I read half of the long list, gave up uh, when I was reading The Shadow King, loved Shuggy Bane, but found it harrowing. And you know what? It's completely fine to give up on a book. I am a sucker um, for just plowing through, but I feel as though I know myself because of how many books I've read and what I like to, I could guess quite easily what I will like and what I don't like, which I, I think is for me and what makes this like entertainment to me, which is reading is the fact that I'm reading things that I would in no way ever pick up. So if I decide to read Wallace the Grad by Sarah Hijadan, even though I don't like it, I'm like, I have to push through it because this is like challenging me on what I don't like, but also reconfirming what I do like. And then I read his second book, well, the second one to be The Orphanage, absolutely loved it. So it, 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 you, it, it, you're rocking on that basis. I think if, if everyone's reading everything that they like and they're like, wow, this is great, this is great, and this is a continual splurge of I'm really good at guessing what I will like and just like overt positivity um, that I don't know if you're challenging yourself enough or maybe that's how I would view it if I get into like I'm doing loads of books that I'm like really like positive on I'm doing a lot of reviews I will like pull the handbrake and be like right we've got to something that like I have zero idea about zero idea about not many people have read let's get into it and I think there's a conversation. Maybe it'll come up in here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll touch on it now. But reading books that people aren't reading is, I think, is so beneficial to actually being critical about the book because there's nothing to base yourself on. I, my the ten of ten coming out Saturday. Um, there is nothing. There's really little. Um in English. So, and if you type into YouTube for a review, I know I'm the only English person, English speaking person, um, whose face is going to crop up. And this happened with, uh, oh, Magda narrator sent me it, a Samskara, a Right of a Dead Man by You Are a Man for Murthy. Um, and I mentioned in the video, I am the only white person talking about that book. Everything else is in Hindi. And like for you to like really engage with something, I'd be like, right, I gotta like really focus on this, like right now. Like I, there's nowhere to hide in that fact. And you do become the voice of the book, even though an Anthem Murthy is a, a classic in what language is it? It's in the Kannada, Kannada or the Kanada. But th that um I'll butcher it. K A W N A D A, Canada, Canada, Canada. I don't know. Um, it, it's a classic, and it's been taught in schools for for people like us. Ninety nine percent of my audience would never have heard of this book, and I do become the voice of it. It's petrifying. I'll tell you another petrifying thing: Titi Dangaremga's book or not. I was like the only person who had done a review on it at that time. I I believe I was the only person who had done a review on it. And it's petrifying, because especially, you know, after this model body and everyone knows it's a trilogy, the likelihood of people going back in the book, petrifying. 
worst thing uh, about this as a whole is knowing you're the only person who's spoken about it. And that happened with Burn Sugar. I was so confident on Burn Sugar. Everyone knows how much I love Burn Sugar. But I was the only person at the time to put a video out. And there's me holding up. You're like, it's great. It's a 10. That's petrified. That makes you absolutely sweat. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's completely okay to be like, I love it, even though it's like depressed or I liked it because of these reasons. That's completely fine. Like, if you liked it, no one can admit it. If you like something, you like it. It doesn't matter if everyone doesn't like it. That's completely fine. Your own person, rock it. Uh, scroll past that. Uh, as we touched more about a mental health video, uh, I'm sure your videos help many people who have watched it. I was really surprised by that video. Um, this is about talking about books, but like actually speaking to people and being like, is the first time I had like actually spoken about it. And I speak to um, the book hotties pretty uh, well. I mentioned something to them three days and I was trying to like hint at it. And I just like bluntly said, and they were like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, X, Y, Z. Just talk about it. Just talk about it. That's something I've learned. I never would have done that had I not started this channel. Oh, okay. A really impressive with your literary knowledge and your ability to absorb so many books in such a short space of time and form such critical opinions. Right. <laughs> I don't think I have... I can recall quite quickly. I, I, I suppose that is something that I can do. Or once I've read something, it does generally stay. But I have to do my reviews and I talk about them within like a week of finishing it. After a week, like, no, <laughs> I have tried it. I have tried it. And I know the videos where earlier on, I had given over a week from reading it. And my recall of like specific things or specific images or metaphors and uh, characters just started to dwindle on me. Um, so I think the the critical opinions could only happen for me so like quickly after the book um, and they at uh, most videos i do are um like like they 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 one take i don't make any notes i never script anything of my videos and i sit down up here and i do the long form and anything i want to like add in skit wise i suppose is like the best way or like any add ins like if you look at like great circle that's after the review so i've edited the majority of it and then i'm like okay where can i add things in and those little things aren't that um <laughs> they aren't really that critical um in any way shape or form um oh still no one has commented that's fine so i'll just, just double check um, and then literary knowledge i suppose I, i've just read a lot i've just read a lot and, I, and i've read quite broadly so i can kind of roughly tune into a conversation I'm, I'm not correct in everything but i can make like asserted guesses and i suppose university does help with that but more so the fact that you're i've broadened my horizon into reading like different pockets of work over like a, a very broad length of time um and i would say if you're only reading classics I think it's very difficult to talk about everything in between to contemporary. And if you're only reading contemporary, it's very difficult to talk in between everything to a classic. I think classic and contemporary, you can kind of bounce back from to, uh, to some degree. But everything in between, you kind of have to read, especially like the 20th century. There's so much going on um, there. It's a bit wild at times. But yeah I, I i i think you just have to you have to move to backlist you have to move to backlist and i think if anyone is worried about that i think someone's here who who i'm not going to mention them by name but someone had made a video recently about this about oh i'm kind of i'm kind of butchering it reducted it a paraphrase in it all in all but 
the 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 outcome was if I read backlist and I make videos and I and I put them out online, no one watches them. Completely true. <laughs> like if I wanted to get way more views, I would just read contemporary and, and like really popular fantasy. That's like I would put all my eggs in that basket. I would be reading like really popular YA, really popular fantasy, um, and the classics. And I would I'm so sorry for touching you. I'm so sorry. Um, like I put all my eggs in that basket, but like it's really important to to move into books and and stray away from what you know to kind of to build that knowledge. Like you have to kind of you kind know, of like build out from the schemata. You, you have to. And even though I've read two Ukrainian books, I can see how what Jadan is doing is talking to some Russian contemporary that I've read and how that's related also to some books that I've read about Bosnia, even though they're talking about like very different things, there's, there's a trend there and you can, you can pick up on it. And it just takes like, it is like three books and you can kind of, you can kind of scope yourself around that. But yeah, it, it's, it's like reading lots and reading broadly time wise, I think is like the most important thing. Um, and again, I my my knowledge on some things, pff, no idea. If someone was to ask me about Victorian literature, like I'm not your person, <laughs> and it's fine to own it. Just say you don't know. I think I've had a few comments. Someone's gone, "What about X, Y, Z?" And I've just turned around and gone, pff, I, mean, "I don't know." Like, I'm not your person. I'm not your guy, pal. <laughs> like, I know what I, I I know what I know, but I don't know what I don't know, and I'm happy to say both. Um. And what's it like doing a PhD for someone who has no idea literally neither you yet? Oh, jeez. PhD is very much being thrown in. Like, it's very much like assumed that you will know what you're talking about. Well, it's kind of the opposite. It's kind of, I know what I'm talking about. Do some research. Understand that you don't know what you're talking about. Where does that, where does that take you now? So everything I thought that I knew going in, which was based off my master's. So I was like, I got like a good thousand words, like a good good few thousand words here to work with i've gone in and it's been like stripped back now so my introduction of like this is what i'm set up to do is about fifteen thousand words but yeah but again I, i'm reading books that i never would have read uh like at all <laughs> uh, which is great which is great that's kind of what it's all about that's kind of what phd is it's kind of like you think you know what you're talking about. Go into it. Get it wrong. Have no idea. Continue. Do you search other reviews or interviews or other things before making your reviews? Generally not. Um, if I'm doing like like Booker, I won't. Booker, I just won't. I, just won't. I don't think that's... You can get swayed quite easily. <laughs> you can go like, oh, yeah, maybe I am too harsh. And I, I don't like that. Um, I think you should go in being like... Like, I've just read it. This is exactly what I thought. If it is something that I'm, like, genuinely... Like, if it's, like, a 1960s... I'll, I'll go for Samskara. If it's, like, a 1960s Canada classic subcontinent, and I'm there going, I just want to make sure, like, I have got this... Like, if someone else was to read the book, have I got this right? Because, trust me, the people who have studied it are going to come back to me and say you got that wrong i will do a bit of research i will do a bit of research but again you you, you, you i mostly come up with nothing <laughs> or it's in it or it's in the native language it was written in which is just not useful to me um so yes no there'd be times where if i'm like i don't really understand i'm quite happy uh, there have been oh god what's a book well just be like i don't know um I mean, the vegetarian. I didn't really think anything much of it, and I've watched reviews and interviews that have kind of given me some direction, but I still haven't reviewed. I still haven't recorded the video because I just don't. I don't really have anything to say about it. Like nothing new, nothing like everyone just says the same things. I feel, which I don't know if you need a video from me just saying the same things as other people. It doesn't really. <laughs> Probably just let them get the views. Um, or maybe like Dangaranga. So I was reading all three the uh, Nervous Conditions, um, The Book or Not, and uh, 
uh, this moldable body that I was watching interviews of Dangaremga throughout that journey because it spans over 30 years just to kind of see where everything was leading on um or or if I feel maybe like if it's like really political it's talking about like a very specific thing that i just have no idea about generally i'd like to go back to the author rather than read news articles but it depends i think some books require it some books don't like my julia fuchs one, I, I really had to talk about the oh what was it the uh bonafide the babas of the paso del something Plaza del paso the, the, the grandmothers, they're great. Like, I had to talk about that to kind of understand, to, to kind of give frame to the book. Um, uh, where there are some books such as... What books haven't I done it on? Maybe the Goddess... I'm not really... I don't like my Goddess Small Things review. <laughs> so I recently commented on it, being like, what? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm not... It was like my second review, and I wasn't really happy with it <laughs> at the time. I was like, I have four subscribers, it's okay. So um, <laughs> um, maybe I should talk a bit more about that. I'm thinking of doing like a Redux version where I, I reread and do Goddess Small Things a bit. Well, not just this, I hated it. Uh, <laughs> but like to be a bit more critical about it. Um, but I didn't talk about anything like specifically there. I mean, not really on Midnight's Children did I really talk about partition. Not particularly. I kind of give like bare bones. This is what happened. This is how many people died. This is this is how many people uh, migrated to each country. I didn't really, uh, to, to Uniform Pakistan and India, but I didn't really talk about anything else. Some books require, some books don't. Uh, completely agree about backlist. It's a shame they're not loved. Do you know what? I've said this in conversations to people. Could you imagine if every time, like if, if every single person read a book that no one had heard of, who was like making videos, like really obscure, like 50s, 60s stuff, that would be great. Like all, like all translated works, not like new transparent. Like it's just like I, like the publishers marketed this new book. Like oh, we've recently brought out a new translation of it, but it's from the twenties. Like proper, that'd be great. I'd love that. I I'd like to hope so. I'd like to hope so. I mean, I started it to kind of talk to people who were reading, but if like people pick it up, I'll be completely down for that. Um. I'd actually enjoy seeing you dissect a hugely popular way. <laughs> I am reading Brandon Sanderson as we speak. I'm reading The Way of Kings. I'm going to do that. Also, Daniel Green's books. I'm going to continue. Um, and Zoe Sugg's book, uh, which thank you to the 25 people who sent me the trailer for <laughs> Two for Joy, the second. I really enjoyed waking up to all of those. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Booker content. Booker 2021. Lads, lads, lads. Booker 21. Can you hype on? Love it. Uh, also, just let everyone know, I will be doing an international giveaway. I, I raised enough. That was great. Uh, of the long list. The long listed books. Minus the short list. And the short list. That is going to be happening. Uh, and, and maybe, maybe I might throw in the original party sash that says book of 2021 lads 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 if i throw that in who else is doing that no one just me so keep your eyes out for that <clears throat> i'll probably do that after i'll probably do that after uh, the shortlist is announced uh similar to the international prize so just keep your eye out and we'll do the same thing do you reread a book and have your opinions changed based on your knowledge you didn't know first time you read through it or do you tend to make your mind up for good i'm the latter um, I can kind of appreciate some things, but if I don't like a book, maybe, I don't know, maybe you change like to some extent, but if I didn't like, like the writing or the plot, knowing some more historical background might not be like enough to pull it. Yeah, but I don't read, I don't reread that often, <laughs> apart from like my PhD books, um, but I kind of have to be neutral about them. Just, just to some degree in my head, I'm kind of neutral. And what is your favorite year of the Booker Prize from what you've read so far? Midnight's Children, 1980. 
Oh my gosh, I should know this. Nineteen eighty four, because it was the twenty five year anniversary. He won it for. Hang on, so that'll be no. In the eighties, Salman Rushdie. Why don't I know that? <laughs> Why don't I know that? Nineteen eighty two, nineteen eighty one. It's early. It's earlier than you think. Nineteen eighty. I don't know. Nineteen eighties. I should know. Darn it. <laughs> You're gonna be saying yes, yes, I am, and I'm reading it with Sarah Kay. Check out her podcast. So that's what we're going to be talking about, Drum. The third edition of all people with chapters of Beautiful World at the end, fixed for the Watch Service Day, underwhelming. Hey, you know what? Mark is going to make money from it. It's a cash cow now, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it. If 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 it gets people reading, I'm down for it. I don't particularly care. <laughs> and do you know what? Like, there's going to be people who haven't, who like, are built up to the hype, but have never read normal people. I'm all for it. It gets people reading. Don't know if I said that. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> right, okay. So, moving on. Um, if anyone has any comments about previous, let me know. Um, I've dabbled in doing a literature degree with university, uh, but for a number of reasons, pulled out maybe one day. If you want to do a literature degree, just do it. You're not going to learn anything. You're going to... The conversations are more useful than the books. If, if you just want to figure out like what, like what an English degree is, go on the previous years find the reading list, and just read those books. Done. There you go. Think critically about them. That's your degree. There you go. Uh, if you want to, like, skip all that. But the conversations of the people that you meet will be more beneficial than the reading list itself. I think that's, like, a fair thing there. People wanted my, like, what I read in each year. Just drop me a message. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you, like, five books from each year that I can like pick off the top of my head. Um I'll I'll do that. You can have 15 books for free. And I'll tell you what my like, I'll get my old exams up because I got them all saved online and I'll go, here's the questions, go. Done. <laughs> like there's some things like I think like people think about like like critical that you have to have like theory behind you. You have to have like something like like some Marxist ideology behind everything that you're reading, or you're going to say, like, I'm going to read from new historicism. People just don't talk about books that way. But trust me, the people who say that they're doing it that way just aren't. I have never seen a purely Marxist reading of any book review online. I've never seen a new historicism review. I've never seen a culturalist essay. Um, or, like, I'll go and talk about it from this point of view. Um, I, I don't think I've seen, I think people would say feminist, but I wouldn't say like people are like talking about like Simone de Beauvoir, Butler, Greer. I don't think people are like really like going ham at like, like book reviews, which is basically what I do. Um, I think there are deep dive videos that would possibly do, but. There's, or they're like they're referencing, like let's use Judith Butler. This is what she says, but it's not. There's nothing like like for what like a university degree is. It's like let's go like ham on Judith, but like Judith Butler. I did one on Judith Butler. And it was like you just got to talk about that or Neil Hamilton's uh, postmodernism. It's like you just got to focus on like everything he says, um, or um, uh, uh, let, let me think. Uh, like D.H. Lawrence from the perspective of a professor Jeff Wallace, which was which was my um, my professor. He was a D.H. Uh, Lawrence, and he he wrote like the modernist like treaties on D.H. Lawrence, um, and you'd have to like do that. Um, it's it's a very it's a very different way of analyzing something than just like generally dropping comments in. Uh, they're two very different things. Um, of going back to the comments though. Um never had a recall of people, but I didn't I don't think I'd like it, but agree. Yeah. If you watch a TV program, you're done. There you go. <laughs> but usually they would pressure us to Marxist gender, feminist, postmodernism, and essays. Yeah, you're kind of like you're forced down that road. Um, and it's it's a very unnatural thing to do. It, it is unnatural due to its like academic, but it's it's to make sure you're like completely understanding like the theory of it 
it's like how when you do a driving test and you read the handbook and you do the theory of it, like to actually like do all of that in a car is just not natural. Like when you actually drive, like you're not thinking, okay, Ted two, and I got to look three times behind my shoulder. And when I get to, you know, uh, if there's ice on the road and there's a car 50 meters in front of me, I know I have uh, like 40 yards clearance in order to like put my mood, like you're just not thinking in that way. And, and, and acad academic writing kind of it forces you to act like you're like passing your driver's test where everything's like a little bit exact. Like you have to make sure you can't just like look in your window. You have to like you have to really look in your hand. Or you have to you have to completely like over the hands. Wait, normally you would just you would just do that. <laughs> That's like the only way I can describe it is that the, the theory of it. I think you, you could get bogged down in theory. You can really get bogged down in theory, and most of it like contradicts itself. Uh, that's interesting for some people. It ain't for me. <laughs> um, I, uh, if you consider it a degree, expect to come across those things too. Yeah, if, if you if you want to get into that, and I think it's I think it's worthwhile maybe asking someone. Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. Like, where do I look to begin? Um, like theory, I I would always go. Peter Barry's third edition, beginning critical theory, that book, read it, you're done. Every undergrad, I think, in Britain should read it. That'll do you, do you solid. That'll do you solid. That's all you'll need to know. It's like basics. It's okay. This is like, this is what feminist theory is. This is what postmodern, this is what transhumanism is. This is what modernism, this is the postmodern. There you go, done. Bish, bash, bosh. Oh, this is what Marxism is. Um, <clears throat> and you're fine. But that's what I would kind of say. Is like, what are you looking at? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, any advice regarding regarding expanding my literary knowledge and developing my reading? <clears throat> critical awareness skills are most welcome. So, expanded my literary knowledge. Read things that you would never read normally. It's It sounds so obvious, but it's true. <laughs> if you come across something and you just have no, like, no idea, you, have, you don't know who the author is, you have no concept, you read the back and you go in, I don't know if I'd like that. That's the book you should be reading. Like, at least, like, two, like, at least Two of those a year, I would say. Two in a year, you read something that you have no knowledge about. <clears throat> That'll set you up a good stead for most things, then, because you'll 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 build this schemata, and you'll go right. Okay, I understand this. I think what someone like <clears throat> okay, I do this. So I focus on like an area, and I go. So, like, like India, I go, I really like Salman Rushdie. This is really how it started. And I go, right. What else is there? Like, what else is there that I could read? So you got Kira Desai. I read Kira Desai. And I didn't really know much of what Kira Desai was talking about. But I was like, okay, you may be interested. And then I discovered her mum was Anita Desai. So I was like, I, need, I still need to buy her books. But I was like, okay, so I have her. I have Aradati Roy. Okay, so let me look. So I kind of have this this broad. Okay, let me find reviews. And that's how I come across people like Yosna, people like Sant Reeds, uh, Smithy, uh, people like Sheila, who are naturally reading this day because they're from India. And they go, people should read this book, this book, this book. And I've never heard of them. Samskara, you are Mantha Murthy. <laughs> didn't even know, couldn't, didn't know it was a thing. Um, she sends me that book, and I go, fine, let's do it. And, and the amount that I have learned from that book is ridiculous. Now, you might read something and go, nah, no idea. That's good. <laughs> like, it's good in a way. If you don't really know what you're reading, like, out to your comfort zone, and you keep doing that, I suppose this is what something I, I would like to do with my channel, is kind of 
suggest books that people haven't read. And I'm surprised. <laughs> I always go, maybe I get a kick out of it now, but I'm always surprised when people go, I, where do you come across these books? And I'm like, I just talk to people who naturally read very similar things. How I came across Genkin Reads, um, who recommended Jadan, was I had mentioned, I had mentioned in one video the Gogol was Russian. And someone went, no, he's Ukrainian. People don't read Ukrainian literature. But I was like, huh, that's weird. And then I was on Instagram, and I think I typed in hashtag Ukrainian literature. Rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Come across her. Uh, she's doing a read-along for the orphanage by saying he's done, coming out in English around the time that I'm looking. So I message, and we get into a conversation. And she goes, oh, yeah, you should check out Voloshilograd. That's also translated in English. And I go, oh, okay. So I buy those two books. And I go, I don't know what this guy's on about. Wait, what was this? What happened in like 2004 Ukraine? I read it and I learn. That's the best way of going about it. Like just, just like two books you have zero idea about. But trust me, they're out there. Trust, trust me. That in like every bookstore, secondhand bookstores are great. You always find like really obscure books like no one's ever heard of. Um, <clears throat> Do you have freedom in what area of literature you want to study? So before you apply, you submit like a proposal saying, this is what I want to study. And then the university says, yes, no, or you should look at it from this lens or this lens. Luckily for me, I have been with my lecturer since I started. So she kind of knows everything I'm doing. So when she approached me to do the PhD, it was submit what you did for your master's because I will be the director and... I, I know what you're doing and I want you to progress it further. So I was in a very different circumstance, but I have been doing romanticism with her for seven years. And I'm good at it. So that helps. <laughs> I think if I was rubbish at it, I don't think uh, my lecturer would give me any time of day. I must confess when I did uh when I did my lot degree, I did pay attention to all the theories. Yeah. Lit degree, sorry. Uh, yeah. Like, it's fine. I don't really understand. Uh, Gria went over my head. We had to read the female eunuch. I was a bit like, oh, okay, this is very different to th the others. Uh, transhumanism throws me a lot. Fukuyama, I don't. Foucault, I couldn't tell you anything about Foucault. Um, I'm doing my PhD uh, with a Kierkegaardian lens to it. And I don't understand anything that man says. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> he's difficult. <laughs> so that's why we would get read it. Uh, I didn't really have to do every one of them. We just had to learn about them in theory and then chose what to use in our own papers. Yeah, also every university is different. They they'll structure things differently. So we we had like very like you're doing like Marxism, and then you are doing this and you are doing that. I was pretty much the first year was you are doing these principles. End of you have to write on them. Um but again, if the, just look around. I put together something called Ridiculous Reader List, which I put together from various sources. It was an attempt to make, yeah, just like, like stuff that you just have no idea about. And always, always move past contemporary. Read stuff no one's talking about. Um, I can't full screen. Hi. Um, <laughs> read stuff no one's reading. Uh, it, it's like the best way to... Um, like to really get like involved in a book because I, I think when I'm reading like contemporary stuff, I'll say Cask, I'll say Cask, let's use Cask or Kazuru Shiguro, even though I'm coming with my own opinions at the end of it, I'm still like aware of what people have like already said or what people have hyped it up to be. There's that sense of I kind of know what's I, I, I already have like a preconception of it where like. Today I picked up um, Otsana's Zabutsko, uh, Zabushko, Shabushka, Otsana Shabushka, I think her name is, uh, the Museum of Abandoned Secrets. Uh, there's the thing. There's the thing I can find. <laughs> and I'm reading it going, okay, uh, Ukrainian uh, contemporary feminist author, 700 pages going from the 1940s in Ukraine up to present day, I believe. Again, I don't know. Um, 
and it just kind of like throws your head in. And I read 10 pages and my brain was like, oh, okay, there's a lot going on here. Um, that's like the best way of doing about it. Like just, just read stuff that you haven't heard of. But, um, I, I think I, I mentioned it in my 10 out of 10 review. So I'm going to say it now. I think people want to diversify their reader list without doing too much work. That I think that's that's the step that's difficult is being like, okay, I want to like read completely to my comfort zone, but I'll choose like the ones everyone likes, so I have a good time. <laughs> but again, again, like you, 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 I'll I'll read some books. I hate them and I review them, knowing that I'm like the only person who has spoken about them. And maybe some people don't agree with that, but exposure is exposure at the end of the day, I suppose. Um. Any thoughts on that? Let me know. Um, right, okay. So, I go back to Ralph. Again, he gave me permission. I said, better check my emails about once a week. Um, if those don't you, don't forget to go quiet. Uh, I thought I'd make a video, which is what this is now, a live stream. Do you mind if you use the body? Paraphrase when necessary. Your name details, everything won't be used. Uh, and I've had comments over the past year since I started. I'll put it in one place. So that's kind of what I go back with. And then he mentions, I have no problem using the question. I don't mind if you use my name. He mentions some other things. I've decided to redact those out. But um, yes, yeah, so he, he's. I say no. <laughs> he says go for it. So I, I've, I've agreed with Ralph that that's fine. That's all I'm doing. Um, inventory of losses. Everyone should read that. There you go. That that's one. If you don't know what it is, if you've never heard of it. Go and buy it. What's the worst that's going to happen? We all buy books. The sit on the shelf for three years. <gasps> it' going to be that bad uh order an inventory lottery because i think it will resonate as much with me as it did with you this is the importance of a negative review i actually wasn't negative about inventory of losses but if you disagree with me and you think i think i would like that you probably know yourself better go and buy it even if it's a negative review you can make up there are a lot of people who give bad reviews um um, and I go, no, I fancy that. I, uh, the one I think what I mentioned on the video was uh, Gao Jinjan's Soul Mountain. Um, ben from Dune Out Antidote was like, hated this. I think it was like the first like properly negative review that I had seen him do. I was like, that's like, first of all, I'm like, now I'm really curious. Um, I messaged him like outrightly saying, um, I'll buy her off you. Like, I'll ship it to me wherever. I say ship it. We both live in uh, the UK, so we could just mail it. But I was like, send it to me. I'll pay for the postage. I want to read it. And I did. And I had a completely different experience to him. I saw very different things of what Xinjiang was... was Zhang Jing? Xinjiang? What Saul Mountain was doing. Um, and we both had a conversation afterwards. He was like, yeah, okay, maybe I didn't see this. I watched his and go in. I see what you're talking about, but I didn't see it as I, after I did my review, I went back to watch his. I was like, oh, yeah, like you mentioned that. Like I didn't, well, as I was reading it, that wasn't really in my head. So always, you know yourself. You know yourself. Let me go back to the comments just to see if there's anything here. Uh, how do you source the rare obscure books? Oh, I can imagine that is very expensive not if they're old um i i find i like 15 quid is like the most i think i've spent on like like a book that i wanted most of them are like like they're about five quid more maybe i i think i i would pay 20 quid for a book quite quite happily if i was like yeah like i think i would i'll take a punt on there um They are. I know some people don't like Amazon, but uh, the, the, the some books you can only find on Amazon. Um, only like uh, uh, what one? Oh, Otsana's Otsana, the one I'm reading at the moment, Otsana's Bushkos. Um, it, it actually is an Amazon. It, when it arrived on the back, it's like an Amazon publishing it's like they've found it i'm not entirely sure how that even works or how if that's a thing anyway 
the only way I could find an English translation was to buy through Amazon. Um, someone did buy it for me because I put it on my wish list, but I think it was like twelve pound. I think, um, which is like the same as if I bought it from Waterstones and paid for the postage and package. So it's okay, but there's some I've I've bought um, that. Uh, I get Amazon, not that they not that they were the only place, but it was either me paid 40 quid for the book or it was one pence and three pounds posted a package on Amazon, like a secondhand book. Um, I think I'm a bit different with like newer releases, but if somebody's like 10 years old, my I don't know how much is going back to the author from a secondhand book nothing um but that's why i think second hand places are good i normally go to track marks in cardiff um i'll keep an eye out but normally for something like like completely obscure yeah world of books abe books um message people on bookstagram or message people in the comments and just be like hey if you finish this book and you like you give a negative review to it like can i buy it off you I think most people would be like, yeah, okay, like <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Um, I, it was like with my Piranesi review. I said, I said in the video, like, ah, if you want it, like message me. Someone did. They just were like, hey, you mentioned it. Can I buy it? And I went, yeah, fine. Shipped it up to them, sent it, and was like, it cost like seven quid to send to your country. And they did. That's way cheaper that way. Um, I think just getting people to know. Um, I, I, again. Uh, Paula here, like a brilliant example. Um, she sent me many books, but of one is uh, Bernardo at 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 Haga, uh, but Never heard of it. Um, I don't know if I could buy it. I genuinely don't know if I could buy it anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, make make friends with people. They'll they'll recommend you stuff, especially if they like are interested in things that are very different to you they'll go oh yeah like I, I know this book or i have it like let's swap or i'll send you this you send me that most people i think aren't that sentimental about books some books i probably wouldn't send out um or i'd be happy to like pay for like a paperback or so something like that but like, if someone wanted a book, for it, do you know what I'll say here? If you wanted a book from me, and you messaged me, be like, "I'll pay X for the book. You ship it to me." I'll probably say yes. I think it'd be very rare if I went no. <laughs> yeah, that's a brilliant one. That's a brilliant one. Um, if people reference works, I'm always like. I want to know what that is. Well, I've done that a few times. Yeah, I can't think of any on top of my head. It's probably been like twice it's ever happened. I said a few times. The little, the, the minimal I can get away with. <laughs> but yeah. And, and it's okay if you read something and you just don't like it. It's completely fine. Let's go back to this. Uh, bu, 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 bu. One thing I'd ask, I want to include in your video is up to you. Uh, I'd love to do a part time English literature degree, a computer module with a university last year do it if you want to do it do it that's like it's the best advice i can give you want to do it do it uh when my kids grow up i think they father i want to do x i'll say go for it just do it if you're if you if if it's if it if you're if it's that on the cards for you you want to do it do it um i get ask people um, i when i was teaching uh, one of my students um so he was 16 at the time i left that school um before starting university he had <laughs> he had messaged he had tracked me down and he had messaged me online being like uh like hey sir like you, you mentioned before you left like if anyone wanted like tips like they could always like reach out and it was just me being like ah, well, i'll be nice if i stay in this school but i didn't um then he was like yeah i'd like to i'd like to chat with you about that and so i just sent him like this is what you want to think about about universities which is probably what we're gonna talk about here um 
And yeah, he messages me like every now and then, being like, "Oh, like oh, I gotta do X, Y, Z. What's, what's the best way of doing about it?" Most people are pretty open, to be honest. Um, and, and interestingly, I I was I'm the same with my drama teacher. I mentioned in my Sarah Kane videos. I still go back. I still message her. I still message her. She taught me up until I was eighteen. When I moved to school, sixteen to eighteen, she taught me. I still speak to her today. I'm twenty seven. I remember messaging her. My my dissertation being like, uh, Miss Roblin. Um, I know I know you haven't taught me for five years, but I really need to go over like um, Anthony Nato like now, and it's like ten o'clock, and she did. Or a legend, she love her. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on the best way to approach this, given the fact that you've done a master's and are doing your PhD. If you want to do it, do it. If you if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, I would say, God, okay. I I would say make sure. Make sure you're just open to like unlearning everything. And I suppose I'm in a different. We'll come back to that. Okay. Any universities you'd recommend doesn't matter. I don't care. I've had conversations with people and they go, I want to get into Cambridge, Ox, like, like Oxbridge, uh, Cambridge, Oxford. Uh, maybe I shouldn't just use like the. Is it a colloquial? I don't know. But Cambridge, Oxford. Um, I'll come back. Uh, Cambridge Oxford, yeah, uh, yeah, you can. You want to go to Essex if you can get in there. If you can, uh, when I was a wee eighteen-year-old boy, uh, I, I, I chose University Centre London, which was three A's. I chose an Aberystwyth, which was two A's and a B. Uh, and then I chose Cardiff Metropolitan, which is what I went to, two B's and a C. Now the reason why I chose a really low when you apply, you choose one really low, is that I knew I could get into it. I knew I could not try throughout my second year, and I would get into it. Uh, now, you might think, you would be cocky, but let me hold up. So, I was doing three A2s, A-levels. So three, I, I did four, then I dropped one. I was doing drama, history, biology. Why, where's English? We'll get onto that. I was doing those three. And then you do Welsh Baccalaureate, which basically gave you, at the time I did it, it gave you an A. And basically, you just had to not be a, like, you just had to not be a numpty. Everyone could get an A at the end of it. It was just like pass fail, and everyone had to pass it. So it was kind of like, you, you just got to do it. So I knew I had an A. Drama, I was consistent A's, having never done drama for GCSE, so from 11 to 16, I didn't do drama. Uh, Miss Roblin took me on a hunch, but I was consistent A's. History, I was A's, sometimes B's, so I was kind of like flexing between. I spoke down with my teachers. They were like, you're, you're on the cusp somewhere. Um, and then I did biology, which I was a B cusp C around it but I was like hey, you're probably going to be a B you'll probably be okay um and yeah so I chose that um and then I chose to do English they all accepted me uh having never done it or studied it so I didn't go in with an A level at all so I went in completely fresh it was absolutely eye-opening going to my first lecture I'd be kind of like thrown into the deeper people, be like, well, I've read all Dostoevsky, or we studied Mary Shelley, and we were looking at it from this perspective, this perspective. I was just there going, I know nothing. Like, I know absolutely nothing. People talk about pathos, people talking about, oi, the reminds you himself. This is the person who, who mentioned this. Um, are we doing Ralph? Okay, I said I would do it, and it's only taken me like four months, but we've done it. Um, but yeah, um, where was I? I? I didn't know anything. I did. Yeah, people were pathos. People would throw in like um, synecdoche, monotony. I was just there going, I have no concept of what anyone's talking about. People throw references to each other, and I just sat down. I was like, I'm just gonna learn it. Um, yeah, and I was the only person in my cohort that came up with a first. Boom! So you don't need any prior knowledge. You don't need to read lots to do it. If you're passionate about it, you'll do it. There you go. Uh, what was the other question? Uh, best way to approach, given the fact, like, just read. Just, like, read, speak to people, get in conversations, and, and read stuff you're just, like, completely uncomfortable with. Not uncomfortable even, like, in regards to, like, subject matter. 
Um, like, read books from Iceland. There you go. There's a starting point. How many Icelandic authors can you met? Do you know? I d I didn't know any before this year. And guess what? I've read one. Uh, Stephenson's Heaven and Hell. I'm now doing him for my PhD. There we go. Like that's what you gotta do. Like, j like, just keep reading. If anyone has any questions you want to throw, please throw. Um, I can, I can stay on for like another twenty minutes or so. Um, so if anyone has any questions, but yeah, basically, how to read critically. Like, actually think about the book that you're reading. Actually engage with it. And, a, like, a big pro tip to starting off is reading something that you have, like, no other reference point to. And there's there's nothing out there on it. And those books do exist. They do exist. Look at the continent of Africa. There are... How many authors from Chad have you read? That, okay, I'll, I'll read something from there. You probably won't find anything on them. You'll just know the name in the book. And they're not pretty. Some of them are pretty <laughs> grim covers. Um, let's have a look. What have I got here? Oh, this is Recommend. Uh, Camel from um, Oshley. Can't remember, but it's Polish for dog year. Um, I was like, I, I want to read Polish lit. I, I don't know any Polish authors. Uh, I know poets, but I don't know authors. And he went, try Wieslaw Michelinski's Stone Upon Stone. That's all I know about it. Um, <laughs> that's that. Uh, Karl Uwe Knausgaard, I didn't really know anything about it. Um, it is my struggle series. Trust me, everything you've heard are from people who haven't read it. And um, it's not really about his wife. That's all I knew about Knausgaard in my series is that he talks about his wife and talks about things all the way through it. About his wife uh, that it happened in one book for all of 50 pages in, in a grand scheme of uh, over three and a half thousand um, <laughs> if you've just caught that bit of my summary that's that <laughs> there we go i don't know who that is i don't it's pre-ordered I asked for a review copy. He said in a video, if people want to request a review copy, email me and I'll try and get it out to you. Clearly ignored me for very good reasons. Yeah, same. Same. If you want something from me, just ask. I'll probably send it to you. I'll probably send it to you. Like, if it's, like, reasonable. If it's reasonable... Um, I could do it because obviously I have to like I have to fit the bill in order to say what the bill is. Some countries are a bit of a crazy, but yeah, same. The good if I read about it is if you like traveling, pass by the bookstore there and ask for ref. Yeah, yeah, I ask. I ask. Um, normally in Waterstones, in Cardiff, I'll just say, "What have you read recently?" Uh, sometimes you get like the the, the casual. Um, like, hey, I, I've read this book, this book, this book. That's like top ten, um, like, like like top ten, like most read. Um, and you go, oh, okay, cool. Like, try, I I I think one one thing I've done is just go, oh yeah, I've read all of those. Normally, the person then will go, oh right, okay, like okay, you read a lot, and then they'll try to find something a little bit obscure, just just to a bit about, oh yeah, 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 I've read it. Or like, I was thinking of if you go and ask for translated works. Normally, their brains you can see it kind of whirring, being like, "Oh gosh, okay, um, I know this, this because this. not that they've read it, but it's come in, and they they know it exists, um, because they stack shelves. Normally, that works quite well for me. Just be like, I'll look for translated. I, I, I've had I've had some interesting recommendations from that, um. Oh no, I can see what a comment is. What's your favorite book? Oh, um, my favorite book. <sighs> oh, 
I'm going to give you two. For very... Maybe for reasons that people... Maybe it's not. I don't know. I really love To Kill a Mockingbird. I think that's like the book that kind of like got me into reading. So I have about four copies of To Kill a Mockingbird. Um... That's one there. Where's the other one? Oh no, it's in. Sorry, it, it's in my daughter's room. So um, she she's name her, her middle name is Scout from there. But I got to kill a mockingbird like fiftieth anniversary. Um, I got a Folio Society version. I, I got a, a a graphic novel of the Killer Mockingbird. Um, was it? Yeah, favorite book. It was, it was like his favorite author. Um, so I really like that. Um, I I don't really have anything like negative to say about to Kill a Mockingbird. I love it. I mean. She wrote one book and people still read it, still love it, still talk about it. It's a good, like, even if you did like it, it's a ridiculously good book and you can kind of see why. Um, secondly, I'd probably say, which always throws people, but if people say, like, I want to read a book, and I, I always hand it out to people, so this one's a bit battered. Uh, but Saga by Brian K. Vaughan. Um, I absolutely adore Saga. I will recommend Saga to, like, the end of my days. And um, my daughter Hazel is named. After this character, as she grows up, um, I like that. I suppose for like other reasons, maybe like a a one of my favorite books is the Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie, but probably because I have like a very different relationship to that because I've, I'm I'm studying it. It's kind of like the basis of everything else. So maybe that kind of falls into it. But I I'd say that people always ask. Like, what do you like? I don't think I'm very consistent. I think that really frustrates people. <laughs> I, I, I don't read much, much many Welsh books, which is why I started the I'm going to read books from Welsh authors um, in order to kind of answer that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, at the moment, maybe it is. Um, name someone. Caradoc Pritchard. Maybe Caradoc Pritchard. One Moonlit Night. Oh, I'm going to do that for a book boy book club. I'm going to get people to read that because I've, I've not read it in so long. Um, but I think it, it's called the best book, Welsh book. Like it's just called that. I won an award called that, so maybe we'll maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, I'm going to read said book. I I would go message me on Discord. Message me on Discord. Message me on Discord. Let's just do that first. Love Mockingbird. Love it. I read that one. On to the next. Boom. Message me on Discord. Um, you could use the Library of Congress to find books. They got a ton of PDFs. There you go. I don't know if I'd have access to them, but uh, was like a ever a favorite trade. Kind of body Chris in a Percy Jackson series. Good. It's good to be varied. I mean, out of gosh, uh, if I say, I think one of my favorites. We're gonna do it. If you've made it this far, where is it? Coming Saturday. Look at oh, look at the is this what we call like the cool list? You're all on the cool list. Uh, I think this might make it onto one of like the best books I've ever read. Um this this is the 10 out of 10, everyone. Can we get some hype in the comments? I'll take silence and <laughs> Um but it's S by Svetlana Draculic. That was a this. If you want to write a book, that's how you write a book. This did not falter. It didn't falter from beginning to damn end. This made me cry from the third page, and I and I felt heavy by the end of it. It is brutal. It is just. It's a, it's a, it, that's a book. That's a book. 
thank you very much for Gracia to uh for sending me uh the the author uh, I was speaking to her uh she's a uh, Croatian uh, I was like oh who's any like who, who, any Croatian authors <laughs> and she mentioned Svetlana Draculic and I went oh huh, okay I'll see what I can find cheapest what I could find was that book and I bought it there you go proofs of the pudding Never reviewed of it before three weeks ago. And it's just <sighs> crazy. There she is. Need a clap it. Clap emojis, everyone. Outstanding. But uh, this this happened with Shani Mutu, Shani Mutu's Polar Vortex. I've never heard of it. I didn't even know who Shani Mutu is. And that's a book I don't think uh, people people I think most people read it <laughs> for like a few people had read it on like a read it booktubers like favorite books of last year and my name was attached to shani rutu's polar vortex um, i think because everyone was bored of me speaking about bird sugar and the fact that midnight children is an ask so i think that one kind of came in and some people were just like what was like why does he like it i just don't think it falters i think i think it's i don't think it's I don't think it's being. It is being clever. It's it is a it's a clever book. Um, I just love how she like brings like the internet and all these people just haven't been in a room together and kind of just see like how it like palpitates. So it just like it just fleshes out itself. I thought I was interested. I think your comments on like dual high uh, not dual hybridity like hybrid. What's the what's the word? dual nationality but it's like it's like more like a hybrid that people aren't born in the country they've come to the country but now they they are that citizen but they're not like officially that citizen i hope that makes sense so one of the characters he's cameroon indian cameroon but now he's come to canada feels as though he's canadian but he's not actually like a citizen of canada but he's got this like hybrid, like he is Canadian, but he's not Canadian. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense of how all these characters kind of blur into that sort of um, that um, S going back. Well done. S was S was a ride. S is a book. I I will never forget that book. It was. It was something. It was. It was like being punched in the face, and me going like, "I don't want more." And Dracula just went tough. You got a hundred and fifty pages more to go. I loved it in like the most miserable way ever. Have I, Mister Beginner? Have you actually had you read critically? Uh, yes, I have. I think. I hope. But yeah, yeah. There, there is a like how how to do it, and I, I think. I think I've kind of touched on like not like misconceptions, but like what people do that they think they're reading critically, but they're just throwing references at each other. <laughs> I don't think I'm well liked <laughs> by some people because I, 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 you could just see through. Trust me, like you could see through it when someone doesn't know it, it, if, yeah, and it's nice to have like complete opposite opinions i i love the conversations i have with people who like we just disagree not that there's like a, like middle ground because we do find middle ground um but just like it's it's way more interesting i think if you put, if you put a room of people if you put five people in a room and they all agree on the book conversation is pretty boring you put five people in a room who have very different opinions about the same book you get some great conversation because there's a there's like not like an interrogation but there's a kind of like want to understand why the other person thinks the other way um i think um i, th I think me and zim do this a lot in uh booker we we have widely different opinions on most books that we read um and we just go back and forth for like three days, just like, but like, but you said this, but what about this bit? And you go, oh yeah, okay, maybe that does falter there. But I still didn't like it. Um, it's just fun. 
it's just like a bit lighthearted. Um, oh, Ralph, oh, Ralph, <laughs> Ali Smith. Well, I should read another Ali Smith soon. I think, I think we, she deserves another review from me. I think, I think we're getting a bit stagnant, but um, yes, thank you ever so. I, I think, I think. I think we've kind of reached the end of the live stream. Um, but again, thank you to everyone who who sent through um, Super Chats. Again, that's all going towards Final Cut Pro, so I could do some fancy editing while I can. So again, any um, anybody made from this live stream, anything sent through to me or anything afterwards the sent uh, will all be going to fund um, this little, this little, this little tiny space um of youtube which i started on a whim a year ago and has been like the best thing i've done like truly and honestly one of the best things i've ever done so we will leave it there i believe oh no <laughs> as sarah comes into it darn it sarah oh um I'm not even going to do it. TLDR, start back from the beginning. <laughs> um, check out Sarah's channel if you're not already. Uh, we will be doing more book of content. We will be doing our shortlist predictions soon. Ooh, I should probably edit. I should probably edit that a lot. <laughs> Way more um, sooner than I did the other one. Uh, that's the freshly, that's the freshly lateness for you. It's not fashionably late, it's freshly late we are thank you very much tony so yeah thank you ever so much if you have any other questions if you have any if you want to pick my brain head over to my discord the book of boy book club uh if you want to message me on instagram and again uh, it's going to come right to the bottom of this ticker over here uh, if you want to send me a question and we can discuss it like this um uh, Please do if you want to ask a Q for me to a email address kdbooksyt at gmail.com. And we will maybe like as with Ralph's, it'll take me three months, but I'll get to it. Thank you ever so much, and I shall see you in the next one. Right now. <laughs>